Hi everybody, welcome to my YouTube channel Dr. Srinivas Medical Concepts and my FB page Dr. Srinivas Concepts. This is Dr. Srinivas, a neurologist from Rajmandri, Andhra Pradesh, India. I am also the medical author of the two books Focus Neurology and Exam Oriented Clinical Neurology. My email is sriklpm at gmail.com. We are continuing with the neuroimaging concepts, ischemic stroke part 22. Of that, we are going to talk about circle of willis, which is part 2. So, we shall continue with circle of willis. Circle of willis. So, how is it formed? So, here you can see we have the we have the two vertebral arteries which join together to form the basilar artery which divides into posterior cerebral arteries this is known as the vertebro basilar system then we have the carotid arterial system that is the internal carotid artery the middle cerebral artery the anterior cerebral artery and the anterior communicating artery this is known as the carotid arterial system so circle of villus is an anastomosis between the carotid arterial system and the vertebro basilar system so this is known as circle of villus nature has given a lot of significance and importance to brain it wants to protect the brain at any cost so it has devised three important mechanisms to protect the brain one is the circle of willis second is the blood brain barrier third is the autoregulation autoregulation is a process where body tries to automatically adjust the blood flow despite fluctuations in blood pressure if there is hypertension blood vessels will will become thinner so that less blood flow is present to the brain if there is hypotension the vessels will dilate allowing more blood to flow to the brain so despite fluctuations in blood pressure a constant blood flow is maintained to the brain that is known as auto regulation second is the blood brain barrier there are a lot of toxic substances in the blood so if everything were to enter the brain it can cause toxic encephalopathy so there's a tight barrier between the blood and the brain which is known as blood brain barrier that is a tight endothelial junctions which will allow only certain substances <coughs> from the blood to enter the brain so this is the blood brain barrier the third important protection is the circle of villus so here you can see the carotid arterial system which is known as anterior circulation and the vertebro based system which is known as posterior circulation so this is in the form of circle so it is known as circle of villus it's an excellent protective mechanism so if the blood gets blocked here the blood can come retrospectively and supply like this if there's a blood block here here the blood can come through carotid artery and this way encircle and then come and supply like this so even if there's a block blood can come either anterior anteriorly or retrospectively and supply the area where there is a decreased blood supply so this is an excellent protection but despite this excellent protection stroke is the second commonest cause of a death despite this extensive protection uh, so and myocardial infarction is the most common cause of death so we have a very good protection in the form of circle of willis blood brain barrier and auto regulation so here this is the vertebral based system the two vertebral arteries join together to form the basilar artery which divides into the posterior cerebral arteries so predominantly the medulla oblongata is supplied by the vertebral arteries so it unites to form the basilar artery so predominantly pons is supplied by the basilar arteries and it the posterior cerebral artery branches off from the basilar artery so the midbrain temporal lobe and the occipital lobe is supplied by the posterior cerebral artery the cerebellum gets three blood vessels one is the pica posterior inferior cerebellar artery from the vertebral artery the ica anterior inferior cerebellar artery from the basilar artery 
and the superior cerebellar artery from the basilar artery. So this is the blood supply of the brain stem. When we come to the cortex, the entire cortex is supplied by the middle cerebral artery. Here you can see the M1 segment of the middle cerebral artery. So the entire cortex is supplied by the middle cerebral artery. <coughs> the occipital uh, uh, cortex is of course supplied by the post cerebral artery and the medial part of the frontal lobe is supplied by the anterior cerebral artery. So there is a communication between the two anterior cerebral arteries in the form of anterior communicating artery and between the carotid circulation and the vertebral basilar circulation uh, through posterior communicating artery. So this is the uh, circle of villus, uh, two basilar arteries of course, the two vertebral arteries joined together from the, to form the anterior spinal artery which of course supplies the spinal cord. So if you, the, if you, if you do vascular imaging, again the same vessels can be well seen in the imaging. So this is the vertebral artery, the two vertebral arteries joining together to form the basilar artery and this is the pica post inferior cerebral artery which supplies the lateral part of the medial oblongator which is primarily responsible for Wallenberg syndrome. The vertebral arteries primarily supply the medial oblongata. The pons is supplied by the basilar artery. It divides into posterior cerebral artery which supplies the uh, midbrain and the occipital cortex. Then we have the internal carotid artery which gives rise to two branches, one the MCA middle cerebral artery which supplies the entire cortex except the medial part of the frontal lobe which is supplied by the anterior cerebral artery. So this is again the vascular imaging. Again you can see the same, the CT head uh, without gadolinium. This is with contrast. You can see same thing, the basilar artery, the ICA, the MCA and the ACA. Uh, again these are the major arteries carrying blood from the heart to the brain. So here you can see this, this is the aortic arch which gives rise to the subclavian artery. From the subclavian artery here comes the vertebral artery that is the vertebro basilar system supplying which is the posterior circulation. You have the common carotid artery which divides into the external carotid artery and the internal carotid artery which gives rise to the middle cerebral artery the anterior cerebral artery. So these are all the branches, the uh, Rolandic artery, postparietal artery, angular artery. So this is the deep cervical artery, thyro thyrocervical artery, this communication between the internal carotid artery and the external carotid artery. This is a persistent trigeminal system. So a vascular imaging again you can see that here MRI neck with gadolinium, the common carotid artery, the internal carotid artery, the vertebral vertebral artery, this is the aortic arch, same thing CT neck with contrast, you can see CCA, common carotid artery and internal carotid artery. So these are all the wonderful concepts of circle of villus. I hope you have enjoyed listening to these wonderful concepts of uh, circle of villus. The other important concepts of clinical neurology, I put in an exam in a book called Exam Oriented Clinical uh, Neurology. I am the author Dr. Srinivas. This book essentially contains all clinical neurology material which will be very useful for students appearing for the clinical neurology exams. So if interested this book could be purchased online. The other book I have written is Focused Neurology which contains all the theoretical aspects of uh, neurology written in a question answer format. This book will be very useful for oral exams. So students appearing for oral exams. This book is available online from all leading booksellers including Amazon. So if interested this book could be purchased online. So I hope you have enjoyed listening to these wonderful concepts. If you have really enjoyed, please like and share the link. But please subscribe to my YouTube channel, Dr. Srinivas Medical Concept, which is India's leading neurology educational YouTube channel and my page, Dr. Srinivas Concepts. Thank you. Bye.